These last two years have been complicated ones for the work of grieving. Traveling to the places where loved ones are sick or dying has at times been impossible, as has been visiting hospitals or nursing homes, even services impossible for much of the time. So we've adjusted, we've found other means and rituals, Zoom, memorial services, some deciding simply to scatter ashes, some delaying services till they can happen the way the loved one wanted them to. All these ways we have tried to find to move through grief and loss made so much harder. Grief, as Carmen pointed out, is always complicated and has its own pace. Well, we'll try and find a ritual here as part of its unfolding together. As many of you know, I asked for you to send a photo and a couple sentences about someone that you wanted us to recognize. And I need to say up front that in the La Brea tar pit of email, I am sure, actually already as of this morning, I know one that's there. And so I apologize for things that weren't found with easy searches. I apologize in advance if Carmen or I mispronounce a name. There will be time at the end of the service for those of you who didn't send in a name or where it was missed to speak the name out loud. And there's a table down below if you brought an object or a photo by chance that you wanted to lay on our shared altar of honoring for you to do so. And throughout the service, after we read the name of the person who is lost for the last time, we just ask you to join us in calling them here, present in spirit, by saying with us, presente. We lost many members this year while we were apart. The collective effects of that are only now apparent as we are back together. We lost member Ken Keep. On the chancel this morning is the first of the 2,000 ties, the one that started his collection. His jacket from young adult group that he and others started, which they called the Rufus P. Cutler Marching Society, named after the least known minister in the congregation's history. Beloved for his smile and good humor, known at a distance by his Hawaiian shirts, keenly felt in his absence as part of the welcoming squad that would make church home. Can keep presente. Ardeth Fortier, mother of Carrie Steer Salazar, died at home on October 25th. She was 92. Ardeth was a beloved mother to six children and five grandchildren, one of the founders of the Grant Pass Oregon Unitarian Fellowship back in the early 1950s, and a longtime member here who sang in the choir and loved to sit and watch Reiko play the organ. Ardeth Fortier, presente. Bill Wise was born in 1940 in New York State. A chemist by training, Bill worked in an army laboratory in Colorado during the Vietnam War and discovered the UU Church there. When he moved to San Francisco, he joined this church. The church held weekly folk dances, and it was in the Thomas Starr King Room that Bill met Angie. They danced together. They found they not only loved dancing, but also hiking and camping and each other. Bill and Angie were married, and their son Douglas was born in 1979. In his career, Bill was ultimately promoted to chemist in charge at the USDA. In his retirement, 
life included Bill and Angie's active and omnipresent life here, where their vibrant partnership became part of the backdrop to their life and ours. Bill passed away on August 17th with his wife and son beside him. Bill Wise, Presente. Ruth Elizabeth McIntyre was born in 1934 on a seventh generation farm in Pennsylvania where she learned a down to earth work ethic, a spirit of care and cooperation and community. Ruth got a robust education and even graduated from the Coro Foundation's public affairs training for women and taught elementary school. Later, she'd focus on work in the community, and by the end of her life, the number of organizations she had served, helped found, supported, and advocated for was legion. Ruth would marry Bruce Morris Cowan, and they would find their way to San Francisco and this church. In recent years, she would sit a few rows back by the aisle. I'd make sure to greet her when we greeted one another in service. Drawn by her big smile, her loving presence, and her reliably encouraging words. Ruth died somewhat surprisingly on August 29th of this year, just after her daughter, son-in-law, and grandson had relocated permanently to spend more time with her. She's sorely missed. Ruth Cowan, presente. The Reverend John Marsh. John was born in 1955 in Brockton, Massachusetts, raised Unitarian Universalist, and in 1976 was ordained a minister in this faith. John served this congregation from 1995 to 2004 in a co-ministry with Reverend Margot Campbell Gross our minister emerita. John's warmth was palpable and under his and Margot's leadership, not only was the church revitalized, but dangerous structural weaknesses in the sanctuary were identified and an enormous earthquake retrofit was successfully undertaken. John was serving the U UU congregation in New Haven, Connecticut and recovering from a stroke when he died on June 6th of this year. He leaves behind his wife, Allison, and children, James, Aiden, and Robin, and grandchildren, Daniel and Nina. John Marsh, Presente. This year, the congregation also lost Francis Lee, an outspoken, regular presence in the congregation's life, whose own life navigated many complex struggles. Francis Lee, presente. And our hearts go out to Melissa Farfarman, whose husband Dave passed away after a long health struggle with Melissa as a regular member of the caregivers circle, finding support for that hard role that we will all be called to play at some point or many points in our lives. Some of us more than others. Dave Farfarman, presente. Longtime member Barbara Mason died this year and her funeral was attended by members of this congregation. Barbara actually was our very first volunteer uh, bookkeeper at Faithful Fools. And Barbara moved to Ukiah about 12 years ago and has had health struggles in recent years. Our thoughts are with her daughter, Rocky. Barbara Mason, presente. Mary Castiglia informed us of the death of Adelma Lowe Prest at the age of 106. Adelma and Mary were on the SCW Scholarship Committee for many years. 
Adelma was married in this church and her husband was moderator in the 50s. Adelma Lo Prest, Presente. I invite us now to sing or hum Spirit of Life. Lynette Deanna Steed McCauley was a cherished wife and mother and grandmother and aunt and sister and friend. She passed away on April 17th last year. Lynette was retired from Kaiser Permanente after a 42-year career as a leader in healthcare information management and yet the medical establishment failed her. In heartbreaking ways, her legacy of strength and resilience lives on in her daughter Christina and grandsons Liam and Sterling. However, our offering this morning is taken in her honor. In her honor, we're supporting the black women's health imperative you can read more about its effort to bring justice and effectiveness to all people in our healthcare system. And it speaks deeply of our values to plow them into this effort. And so I invite you, those of you who are here, as you leave this morning, there are baskets in the lobby. There's our online giving system, which you can use now, and those of you at home, or you can send checks. Next week, we'll report back on how our efforts to support that are bearing fruit, and I encourage you to read more about it. Lynette Diana Steed Macaulay, Presente. Others in this congregation suffered hard personal losses that we call into this circle of community where joys are doubled, but where when we lean into one another, we hope sorrows, if not halved, can be lessened. Christopher Rodriguez shares the hard summer his family had. His mother, Claudia Joyce, passed in June after a convalescence from a fall. She regularly attended our services during lockdown and he was able to see her in the spring when they were both vaccinated. She loved being a mother and a grandmother. Claudia Joyce, presente. And in August, two days before his 48th birthday, 
Christopher's middle brother, Patrick Rodriguez, died of a pulmonary embolism. He'd moved to Sonora with his wife and two boys to a bed and breakfast that they acquired in 2019. He was a great artist and loved his family intensely. Patrick Rodriguez, presente. Betsy Jack and Alex Dar, Kirsten Hove and Luna and William, ask that we remember Ian Mauser, husband of Karen Dar and father of Jude Mauser, age six, who died on October 14th, 2021, while on a bike ride in Arizona. Ian was a deeply compassionate and creative person who dedicated his life to using music to heal, touching the lives of over 14,000 young people through the organization he founded in Portland, My Voice Music. Ian Mauser, presente. Debbie Wu lost her grandfather, James Wong, who passed away at age 90 this last spring. James Wong was a good-natured, artistic, and physically fit man who was well-loved by his family and friends. James Wong, presente. Catherine McGinnity, daughter-in-law of Linda Anger, passed away on January 12th of this year. Catherine was an accomplished professional dancer and deeply loved teacher. She was a creative spirit who enriched the lives of all who knew her. Linda and her son, Christopher Griffin, mourn her death and celebrate her life every day. Catherine McGinnity. Stephanie Gowan asks us to remember her father, Jerry Leonard Allen, who passed away on January 15th of 2021. He was a Navy pilot and one of the first African-American pilots for American Airlines. In San Carlos, Jerry Leonard Allen became active in civil rights and community engagement, particularly at the local level. He was a great storyteller with a somewhat complicated and challenging personality. No one can deny he was interesting. Jerry Leonard Allen, presente. And Mary Castiglia asks that we remember her daughter, Diane, who died after 9-11. Mary is grateful for the time and remembers the lovely years I was able to share with my daughter. Diane Castiglia, presente. Meg Whitaker Green asks us to acknowledge the death of James Kenner Whitaker. James was an attorney at law, but more importantly, the former husband of Meg and father of Hillary, Courtney, and Kimberly. James died June 2nd, 2021 in Indiana. Nicknamed the Gov, he died surrounded by family. James Kenner Whitaker, presente. Also significant to the Whitaker family was the death of Reverend Ron Cook this past July. Ron was a UU minister and professor at Star King School for the Ministry for many years until 1978. Ron lived and died in the house he designed and built in Big Sur that was a refuge that he provided for Meg's family for many years. Ron was the adult male who was present for Meg's daughters who had an absent father, Meg writes, for his love and his constancy, Ron Cook, Presente. Carrie Parker asks that we remember her stepmother, Thea Park of Prescott, Arizona, who passed away rather suddenly back in March. I miss her almost daily. She's just not there at the other end of the phone line anymore. Thea Park, 
presente. The ripples of loss echo back into time and space. Marty Vanderlyn asked us to remember his father, grandfather of Vanessa Vanderlyn, Justin D. Vanderlyn, and also to remember Vanessa's mother, Patricia Post. The photo on the altar was taken during happier times at Lake Tahoe. Justin Vanderlyn and Patricia Post, presente. And we call into this space the Reverend Kay Jorgensen, who was social justice minister of this congregation, co-founder of Faithful Fools and of Up on Top After School Program, steward of street level experiential learning, Kay found a way to acknowledge the illusionary walls that separate human beings. Her work affirmed that embodied justice and compassion can happen on a daily basis, quietly, personally, emotionally, and with the highest standards of humanity. Her spirit lives on in all who take up that work and the spirit of presence. Kay Jorgensen, Presente. Jean Yuhas, the sister of Nancy Noah Bear, passed away on November 26, 2019. She was known for her loving and generous spirit and her fabulous sense of humor. She made friends wherever she went and always had a good time. Jean Yuhas, Presente. Kristen Stevens asks us to remember Doug Coates, good friend and ally. You'll be greatly missed, Doug Coates. Presente. Our two most recent losses, intimate ones, for Carmen and for Vanessa. In Goa, India, on October 29th, Naomi Nirmala Mascarenas Imanesis passed away. Naomi was a force of life, outspoken, the founder of India's first design magazine, a reporter for the Times of India, a lover of history and culture, and a storyteller par excellence. She was also a source of unconditional love. Her family misses her greatly. Naomi Nirmala Mascarenas Emanesis. Presente. And on November 3rd, San Francisco lost Brian Edwards, Brian who centered his life in struggling in solidarity with folks on the streets, who worked closely with the Coalition on Homelessness, Faithful Fools, and other organizations, anything to ensure folks on the street got their needs met. Brian was a larger than life personality with a wicked sense of humor, a sharp analysis and a nose for sniffing out injustices, which he never left alone. His biggest quality, however, was his heart, which he wore unapologetically on his shirt sleeves and which was enormous. Some people live a hole so big you'd think the world would fall in around them when they're gone. We've lost a few of those this year. Brian Edwards, presente. And thanks to some careful notes by members of our pastoral care team, Gina Fortunato, we know of other losses you have mentioned. Not exhaustively, they include that Sue Anthony and the loss of her brother David this year, Laura Davis, who lost her brother Hamilton, Dennis Adams, who lost his mother, Anita, and Gino himself, who lost his cousin, Erna McGrady, and close friends, Robert Macario and Daryl Legasson. For these named, we call out Presente. And recognizing that all of you, many of you, may have names they wish to call in this space and in this hour, 
We ask you to speak them aloud or write them in the chat. When we are done, we will say words of blessing and call them present in this space. Please say the names of those you would like to recognize and honor. In honor of all those whose names have been mentioned and those names unmentioned but held in our hearts, we say together, Presente. Let's sing together or hum, Spirit of Life. 